The long arm, tall southpaw, who has certainly been around, and if he can box and move, why he figures to give Marquez a pretty good test. Yeah, well, he comes out with some obvious physical advantages over Marquez, and Macari still learning how to fight a southpaw effectively is something you've got to go through uh, going up the ladder, and it's not always an easy thing. And Mingo's a veteran, and he's been around, and could possibly pose some problems for Marquez, although Marquez certainly would be a favorite because uh, he is coming off an outstanding 1996 in which he fought five times won them all, defeated two ex-world champions along the way, and a pretty tough customer beside, and Daryl Pinkman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, grew up a lot, as uh, Nacho Beristain uh, wants him to do in each and every outing. It uh, seems only natural that you would want to improve and uh, pass one hurdle after another, and in that fight with Pinkney that Rich alluded to, uh, Marquez was knocked down for the first time in his career and uh, bounced back up. Uh, a bit shocked, I'm sure. But wiser, knocked Pinckney down and went on to dominate Pinckney and to win the fight. We had that one up in Tahoe. Caesar's Tahoe. There's a pretty good exchange, and Marquez stumbles away from it. Yeah, he got tagged a pretty good shot to the belly. And I think Marquez improvement Tom has been fairly dramatic and uh, far more so than for example the youngster we saw here tonight Nestor yes, Garza yes. who's who's taken uh, smaller steps uh, you know along the way and has not gone up the ladder quite as dramatically as this youngster has you know? he lost his first fight ever and since then has won 18 in a row and not all of them have been easy to be sure and he has fought some tough competition and one expects that Mingo if uh, Antonio Curtis who's the matchmaker for forum boxing has anything to say about it will provide a very tough test for the young fighter here tonight. Mingo held a, a title belt of sorts, uh, lightly regarded uh, to be sure the World Boxing Federation, WBF, but he, he was their champion. He lost that title on November 9th in Manila, the Philippines. He was stopped by Rico Ciadora in 11 rounds to lose that uh, belt. Actually, he fought twice and lost both of his outings in 1996. So he's hoping uh, this year, obviously, will be better than it was a year ago, but he does hold it. You take a look at his record, Tom, down the, uh, not too far ago, he fought Daryl Pinckney as well. And, and beat him. And he beat him. Yep. So they do have that in common. Both men have wins over Pinckney. Uh, he beat Pinckney in eight, and uh, Marquez had to go the distance. Whether that at the time was an eight-round bout, we don't know. It didn't say decision or KO or anything else, and his record just said uh, eight rounds. So one assumes it was an eight-round fight. Nothing more than that, and that Domingo got the decision. <laughs> Marquez in the black, trimmed in red, and uh, uh, Mingo is in the gold and black. And we'll be back to see about round two in a moment. There was a bit of um, classic instruction going on in, in Mingo's corner between uh, the first and second round, and that is they were cautioning him about his right foot. It's got to be outside the lead or left foot of Marquez. Consequently, Marquez has got to have his left foot outside that lead or right foot of the southpaw Mingo because that is the way to fight a softball. Put your foot out there, go to your left, throw left hands, and throw the right hand right straight down the middle, and they were cautioning Mingo about all of that between rounds. And they were also asking Mingo to get off first, not wait for Marquez and try to counter punch, but go ahead and throw your punches first. Nice exchange. Now, Mingo is not using a lot of lateral movement. In the fight where Marquez had this most trouble against Julian Wheeler, yes. Wheeler confounded him with a lot of movement, Tom, and, and uh, Mingo is not doing that. He is boxing, uh, but he is not uh, utilizing a lot of movement, and he doesn't have a lot of head movement here either so far, and it looks to me like he's there to be hit if Juan Manuel can uh, get that right hand off. Now, remember, Mingo is a couple of inches taller. There's a good right-hand lead, and Marquez scores with it and dances away. But if you want to stand in front of Marquez while you're in for what could be a very tough evening, because he can really fight if you're standing right there in front of him. He doesn't have to find you, as Rich said. If you aren't moving side to side, why, uh, he'll give you a busy time of it. He can hit. He's got, uh, out of his 18 victories, 13 knockouts, so he's got plenty of sock. And if Mingo wants to stand there in exchange with him, uh, he's uh, 
in for a pretty tough night, I would think. And he's a good, experienced fighter, Tom. He went the 12-round distance with Hector Lizarraga. He lost a very close decision, a split decision in that one. He's been the distance with some other good fighters and fights that he has not won. We mentioned his decision victory over Pinckney. So he knows what he's doing in there. And it looks to me as though Juan Manuel is doing a little bit more studying here in the first couple of rounds and trying to figure out his opponent, really, and trying to figure out how to go at him because this is a taller guy. He's reaching up when he throws uh, his punches. And it is a left-hander, as we've uh, mentioned uh, to death so far here, but he's, a, but he's being faced with some things that he doesn't normally come up against. Cedric Bingo at 5'9". He's in the black and the gold. Stripes and stars. In the black and the red, that's Juan Manuel Marquez. These two men are meeting for the vacant NABO featherweight title. They came in at 125 and a half. Bingo with a record of 22 and 7. And among his other attributes, has got a pretty good chin. Marquez had loved to test it here tonight. He's spending much of this round, Marquez is, Tom, in fainting with his shoulders, with his hands, and he's what he's doing there is he's just going to note how Mingo is reacting to some of those feints, and he'll utilize those a little bit later on. Ten seconds remain here in round number two. So far, this has been a very nice fight. I mean, uh, there have been no big punches, and uh, Marty Dinkin, who is one of the accomplished uh, uh, third men in the ring, really is just uh, keeping out of everybody's way and doing uh, his usual brilliant job. Very nice. Very very nice second round. We'll go to the corner. Marquez's people. That's Nacho Beristain, the man with his back to you. Jimenez is also there. And of course the doctor looking in. Across the way, you see things are calm, cool, and collected. Cedric Min goes to the corner. Joel Stevens, Louis Mingo, Jane O'Rourke. They're rich, aren't they? Yeah, I think they, they feel okay with the way things are developing. Although I've given Marquez both of the first two rounds, Tom. I think they've been very slight uh, advantages in each. Get your timing down, but throw the punches in. Over in that, the other corner, right behind Marquez, going down the stairs now, the Nacho Beristein, who you mentioned, who I believe now, Tom, is really up among the top three or four trainers in the world today. He is just outstanding. A brilliant strategist, tactician, and conditioner. He uh, was the architect of Daniel Zaragoza's recent victory over uh, Wayne McCulloch in uh, a fight that surprised many of us as to its outcome. And he seems to have truly a great rapport with his fighters, and they with he. And uh, it's almost um, a family thing, and uh, yet he uh, pulls no punches. He's alluded to the fact that uh, uh, and people say, well, how's so-and-so doing? How's Marquez doing? Well, we'll find out because we're going to put him in with this guy, and this guy can fight pretty good, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we'll find out just how far along he is. Yeah, Nacho doesn't exactly go overboard, especially if the fighter's in the same room with him. When he, That's right. I remember when we were interviewing him up in Lake Tahoe with yeah. Marquez standing there, we, we were asking him, you know, how do you feel about him? And, well, he's a pretty good prospect. Yeah. <laughs> I kept looking down. I was saying to myself, this kid's 16 and one, a different fair prospect. <laughs> Then goes the south play. Yes, Rich. I think uh, Marquez really went to school in the second round there, Tom. That was just a study hall round for him. I think he's going to be a little bit more aggressive coming out in this round. He looks a little bit more focused and trying to do something offensively now in this round. Trying to utilize maybe all of those feints that he was uh, that he was going through in the last round, studying a way to get to me. He is, of course, shorter, and as you look at the fight and they uh, close on one another, why would appear that Mingo is even uh, taller than the five nine and. Lands a good left and a follow up right hand, and Mingo backs up. And for the first time, they fall into a, a bit of a clinch as Mingo grabbed and held on. Two pretty good shots, might be as good as the two punches we've seen so far in the fight. We're here in round number three. Right-hand lead by Marquez is uh, proving to be pretty effective here in round number three. We can take the Pinckney fight as a barometer. Marquez 
usually gets better as the fight uh, goes along, Tom. And even the Julian Wheeler fight, when he appeared to be outpointed, he was coming on very strong at the end of that fight and stopped uh, Wheeler in the last round, although some of us didn't feel that the fight deserved to be stopped. Nonetheless, it was uh, Marquez who was coming on. He, he gets better as a fight goes on, as he studies his opponent, breaks down his style, slowly dissects it, and figures out what he has to do to bust him up. Nice right hand lead scored for Marquez, and then he closed with Mingo and threw a good sharp left to, to the midsection. Marquez, the smaller of the two, and now Mingo coming down in a bit of a crotch, which would negate whatever height advantage he has. He does have a reach advantage of a couple of inches. Marquez in the black, trimmed in red. And your comments about he gets better as the fight goes along is certainly very evident in the one against Pinkney. We'll be back. This is the end of round three. Marquez began to get to work in round three. He landed a good right hand there to Cedric Mingo that knocked Mingo back a couple of steps and definitely caught his attention. Probably the best single punch of the fight so far. This is round four. We're scheduled for 12. This is for the NABO featherweight title. The title is vacant. Mingo is the taller of the two men in the black and gold. And in the black trimmed in red is Juan Manuel Marquez. If you watch, or maybe you can envision the label can't miss all over them. That is what uh, fight people refer to when they talk about this talented youngster out of Mexico. Tom, this is, of course, for the featherweight title in the NABO. That's a North American boxing organization, so it'd be a North American title for the winner of this fight. A guy who used to fight in the featherweight division, in, uh, in this weight division, but now has moved up to junior lightweight, who we, again, have watched since the beginning of his career, Chico Castillo, mm -hmm. has uh, been awarded a world title fight. So we're happy to announce that, that uh, he will be fighting Julian Lorsi of France. They will fight March 1st in Paris for the vacant WBO junior lightweight title. Title. Uh, Rogelio Tour has uh, decided to retire and has given up the title, and so Chico Castillo is going to get a chance to win the world championship. What would prompt Tour to retire? Actually, I believe, it, I believe it's a, uh, I believe it's an injury problem for him that uh, he decided to give up the, he decided to give up the crown because of it. Good right hand buried to the body by Marquez. Throws the right hand, scores again, and uh, Mingo kind of nods his head up and down as if to say, yeah, good punch. Mingo with a right and a left, neither one of which connected, both were short. with those quick moves with Parada and that fainting with the shoulders and bobbing and weaving and almost looking like he wants to jump in it. Mingo's got just a little bit antsy, isn't it? Yeah, he's trying everything, but, you know, Mingo, as we mentioned, is a veteran uh, who's seen a lot of it, Tom, been around for quite a while. He doesn't fall for all of those feints necessarily. Juan may be do utilizing them all, but Mingo may not be buying many of them. So if that's the case, he can't really follow up with the punch. Mingo's going to need to get busier than well. Got nailed with the right hand and he's hurt. He is holding on, got nailed with the right hand. Marquez hit him a dandy shot and Mingo's on his horse and moving away. We're in round number four here of the scheduled 12 rounder. I don't think he's quite recovered yet, Tom. He looks a little bit shaken by that strong right of Marquez. But he's up and moving now, and the round is coming to a close. It would appear that he's going to survive. There's the bell indeed, but an indication that Marquez has got a lot of power and uh, stunned Mingo with that shot. A reminder, Budweiser Championship Boxing's Fight Night will be back next Monday, February 10th, and the main event is going to feature Mark Two Sharp Johnson, who will make his second defense of his IBF flyweight title against Alex Montiel. Johnson is 30 and 1, 23 knockouts, has won 29 in a row. Montiel is 33 and 2 with 33 knockouts. Join us. Budweiser Championship Boxing's Fight Night next Monday, February 10th. Boy, I'll tell you, if you haven't seen Mark Tushar Johnson fight, you're in for a treat next Monday night. I hope you're at the forum to watch in person. He's a dandy. Here's that shot again, Rich. And it's going to be a right following the left jab. And boy, that really shook up Mingo. 
definite stagger after that punch. Marquez did a nice job, Tom, of keeping that left hand extended out there, so I don't think Mingo ever really saw that right hand being launched by Marquez. Kind of snuck in behind it, didn't it? Yes, Classic it did. style. Up they come for round number five. Mark Two Sharp Johnson next week. What do you know about Montiel? Is he uh, obviously 33 knockouts and a record of 33 and two? This guy's a puncher. Huh? Yeah, very good fighter, but I think uh, he's facing a guy who has, you know, the consummate all-around skills in Mark Two Sharp Johnson. He's a good fighter though, and well respected is uh, Alex Montiel, and it's going to be a nice little test for Mark Two Sharp Johnson, who hasn't fought for a while. Tom. We've never seen Johnson in a bad fight, have no, we? I can't recall one. I can't. In fact, most of them have been uh, absolutely sensational. Oh. And it was right here that he hit uh, uh, Tejador with the left hand. <laughs> that was just a classic in the first round to win the title. And Francisco Tejador is some kind of good fighter. And we've never seen Johnson in a bad fight. I hope you'll be with us next Monday night. I hope you'll come to the forum to watch him fight. And if not, why, do join us. You're in for a great treat. He's a classic fighter. This is round number five. It's scheduled for 12 for the NABO featherweight title. Big month of boxing for forum boxing. 24th back here at the pond. So three big bouts here in the month of February. Loaded up uh, on February because it has only 28 days. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> nice well, it's going to be a very ambitious year. Forum Boxing has plans to promote maybe 30, 32 fights this year, 32 fight cards. Rather. Marquez trying to cut the ring off on uh, Mingo, and Mingo um, is obviously. Uh, been around. He is uh, not about to get uh, trapped if he can help it. Lean and lanky at 5'9 and 125 and a half pounds. Marquez twice now in this round has tried to sneak that right hand home against after the left jab against Mingo, but Mingo, having gone through the experience of the previous round, is a little bit more aware of it and wary of it and is guarding against it and has avoided both of the follow-up rights. The old... Uh, Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah? Marquez very patient. Steps in and scores with the left, not once but twice. Round five. Coming to a close. We'll be back after this. Rich Murata's scorecard after five rounds looks like a baseball outing from Sandy Koufax. A shutout. Marquez, 50 to 45, meaning he won every one of the rounds, 10 points. And uh, the losing number, Domingo, 9. Hence the 50-45. Yeah, but, you know, that sounds like a big one-sided blowout, Tom, but really only one round extends. Truly. That was the one punch with, with a good right decisive, hand. Decisive, huh? yeah, yeah, round. You know, Mingo's been in every round, but he just doesn't get busy enough, Tom. He doesn't throw enough punches to win a round. No, I, I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, I've been watching him here sitting alongside, as you have, and he's been throwing out that jab a bit more, but there was a jab and a left hand, and neither one of them were thrown, and neither one of them landed. And I would think you would have to at least touch your opponent to... Um, Gain some favor with any one of the three judges. Marty Denkin is referee, but he's not both. Marquez beginning to pick it up. It looks like a little again at the start here at round number six. He has an unusual style with his left hand, Tom. He holds his left hand out further than most fighters do, Marquez, when he's uh, just uh, standing there bouncing up on the balls of his feet. He likes to hold that left out there. And I think he wants to get your, his opponent thinking about that left. It's almost out there, almost punching him, but it's just kind of holding it out there in front of him. He wants the opponent thinking about that left, and then he can come through with the big right hand. Which he's trying to do here. He's landed a couple of them. He is, of course, a favorite with the crowd. Mingo is making his first appearance for forum boxing. And um, 
So Juan Manuel Marquez is a um, uh, local favorite in that regard, though he is obviously from Mexico. But he has had great success by the football boxing and has become, quote, a local son in that regard. Very bright, articulate, handsome young 20 years of age. Trying to land that right hand, the one that jolted Mingo a couple of rounds ago. And he scores with the right and throws the left hand to the, to the ribs of the liver. You know, you get these youngsters that come up from Mexico, Tom, and foreign boxing is uh, fortunate and very happy to uh, utilize them to sign many of these fighters. And the kids that they do sign, you know, people like Marco Antonio Barrera and, of course, Chiquita Gonzalez, Juan Manuel Marquez, and so many of them. They are unfailingly polite, as you mentioned, bright, uh, energetic youngsters, very respectful. Uh, it's, uh, it's refreshing to see how they uh, uh, treat other people. It's great to see how they treat other people people fans and media alike yes well certainly Barrera and this young man you've mentioned right here are every bit of that of course Chiquita Gonzalez has retired unfortunately but he was every bit what she said a real gentleman we'll be back it's about for round number seven it's scheduled for 12 you're looking at Cedric Mingo in the black and the yellow or gold in the black trimmed in red as Juan Manuel Marquez at stake tonight the NABO featherweight title they came in at 125 and a half apiece so far it has been all Marquez and now Mingo comes out looking like a guy who uh, has suddenly decided to come to the fight and that was the instructions I think from his corner Rich get out there and get busy well I think they realize that he has not been busy enough Tom you got to win round you got to put some points in the bank. Marty Jenkins, the referee, went over to Bingo's corner between rounds and said, uh, let's pick up the action a little bit here. Not that Dinkin has a, a voice in the voting, but uh, he says that most of the crowd was that uh, Mingo looks like he's going through motions and, and wants to go 12 rounds. Mingo's utilizing a little more movement in this round, too, Tom. He's been uh, circling a little bit more. I think, I think it's clear that you're going to have a little more success against Juan Manuel Marquez if you do move some. Yeah. If you do present some boxing problems to him, then if you go out there and uh, let's go mano a mano. Yeah. Mingo's got a good chin. You saw that when he took a really a sharp right hand that stunned him, backed him up. But aside from that, he was quick to recover. And now he and uh, Marquez are just about six or seven inches closer to each other. And as a result, they're landing some pretty good shots. And the fight is beginning to progress a little bit. Domingo now goes into that fake and move. And of course, the more he moves laterally, why, the better off he'll be against Marquez, who has trouble with good lateral movement boxers. why I single Marquez out. A lot of people have trouble with guys <laughs> with good lateral movement, Rich. But he's become, you know, Marquez is a little more patient, a little more savvy now, Tom. And I think he's... Banged heads together there. Marquez looks as though he got it right in the corner of the mouth. He's all right. Marty Dankin comes over and says, you're okay. Looks like Mingo does have a nut from that uh, clash of heads, though. I was noticing it beforehand. A little bit of swelling under his right eye. Cedric Mingo from South Carolina scored with his jab there and got nailed with the right hand. And there's a pretty good left thrown by Marquez. This is round number seven, scheduled for 12. So the action has picked up considerably here in this three-minute stanza. Go boxing quite well there, making Marquez miss repeatedly. There's the bell, and that's the end of round number seven. Team's Fox Attitude. You're watching Fox Sports West. Go boxing quite well there, making Marquez miss repeatedly. There's the bell, and that's the end of round number seven. And we'll follow Marquez back over to his corner. 
Escúchame bien lo que vas a hacer, vas a pasarlo, vas a hacerlo fallar y atrás de eso te vas con golpes, combinaciones de golpes. ¿Oíste? And beat the shit out of you with the right hand, the same way every right-handed fighter fights a left-handed fighter. Wait, get out there and get off. This is bullshit. You feel? He means he's, he's fine, and he'll feel a hell of a lot better when I get through with him. Okay, you get out there and you throw a fucking straight left hand to quit this bullshitting around. That kid didn't fit to carry your goddamn gin bag, and you're letting him kick your ass. Why don't you go out there and hit the referee? That's the only motherfucker out there you can hit. Well, that was rather colorful. Get out there. <laughs> Aside from the language, which uh, makes that corner X-rated, he was he was right to the point. Make no mistake about it. Everything he said is correct. Mingo has, uh, for six rounds, although he showed evidence of it in the seventh, been kind of just coasting along and getting hit. I don't know how his evaluation of uh, Marquez as being not fit to carry your ring bag is really uh, a factual thing, but, uh, and he says, you're letting him fight like every right-hander fights a southpaw, hitting you with right hands right straight up the middle. And Mingo certainly has been that, uh, that easy from time to time for Marquez to hit. But a scathing verbal attack no, by it wasn't exactly flowery rhetoric. No. And uh, for a corner that has been kind of quiet and uh, peaceful, it was that right hand again, and that scores. And Mingo has got really a bona fide mouse under his right eye. Number eight of a fight that's scheduled for 12. The NABO featherweight title. Uh, it must be noted that Mingo is uh, trying to close with Marquez and trying to uh, do as his corner told him. Throws a left hand. You're fighting a southpaw and you're right handed and you throw a right hand, one would assume that the southpaw's best lead against him would be the throw left hand. But Mingo has not been doing it and his corner wanted him to do it in no uncertain terms. He does have a reach advantage and a height advantage, but so far neither one have been effective for him. Yeah, but when you've got a reach advantage, you've got to snap that jab out there and make use of that reach advantage, Tom. You can't just paw out there with it and then just kind of paw with your left hand. Right. He doesn't really use that that uh, right jab as, a, as an offensive weapon for himself to take advantage of what he has in height and reach. And he can box, his credentials say he can, so why he isn't throwing that right hand, in his case, he's the southpaw out there. Not once, but twice, keeping Marquez at bay, so to speak, keeping him from getting off first, and then follow with that left hand, easier said than done, of course, and a lot easier done sitting right down here talking about it than getting into the break and doing it. But it would seem to be what his corner wants him to do, and he's just trying better in this round, Mingo is, but has not really controlled any part of his fight since he opened up. You know, Mingo is 34 years old, and he kind of looks it to me, Tom, in, in, in the fight here tonight. He's a little bit off with his, with his punches. Uh, they're, they're not really sharp punches. Perhaps he's feeling the effects of that. And by the same token, Marquez is 23. There's 11 years difference. There's the bell, and that brings us to the end of round eight. All right. The devastating dozen on tap now. Rich Parada has compiled still another, ah, uh, the man. Oscar De La Hoya, by virtue of his win, and an impressive one it was, moves to the top. Roy Jones Jr. lurking in second. He hasn't been far from number one all year, though, has he? Well, Jones has been our guy number one for the last year, but De La Hoya, we feel, has just been facing too much great competition. Why didn't Jones knock out McCallum, I wonder? I, huh? I didn't feel he was very impressive in that. We put Felix Trinidad, Ricardo Lopez. We're still waiting for him to get a big, big fight. There's our heavyweight champion. He's ranked fifth. Pernell Whitaker gets his shot at De La Hoya. Costa Zhu, who I thought was an absolute sensation in that uh, <laughs> De La Hoya card, blowing away Leonardo Moss. And then there's our champion, Mark Tushar Johnson. We'll see him next week. Junior Jones, Corte Romero, and Marco Antonio Barrera. We're not going to forget about him. No. All right, and Junior Jones hadn't better forget about him either. They're going to m meet again in April. That should be a classic. Up they come for round number nine.
match. Neither man has been down. Mingo was uh, staggered with a solid right hand. Early on, there's another right hand that lands. Marquez scoring with that. He's got some swelling under both of Mingo's eyes. <laughs> Mingo chastised. Almost brutally so. A verbal chastisement over in this corner between rounds. Not so much this last time, but the round before. And he responded by coming out and working very hard in round number eight. He has seven knockouts in his career. Twenty. Excuse me. He has a total of ten knockouts and 22 wins. Barrera, excuse me, Barrera. Marquez with his 18 victories has 13 knockouts. Get me thinking about Barrera again. <laughs> well, Tom Mingo's never been a, a hard puncher. I mean, he's gotten by on his uh, guile in the, in the ring. And, he, you know, we're seeing some of that here tonight. But I think this was one of those nights where he figured, well, now I'll start off a little kind of slow, and I'll take a round or two and kind of get warmed up, and then I'll get going. But what happens to an older fighter sometimes, you start that way, and you go, well, the next round I'll get started, and it doesn't happen. Next round I'll get started, and it doesn't happen. And you, before you know it, you fought the fight, and you never really got started. Yep. some blood coming from his nose. And I think Marquez senses a little something here at time, and feels maybe he's got the guy going, but he doesn't want to get sloppy. He doesn't want to get wild, so he's he's coming in fairly, you know, rather warily as he, as he does come in, but he's looking for a little more offense. I sense the same thing, and I know you do too. Feel as though Marquez has really taken charge of this fight here in the last couple of rounds, even though Mingo has come out more willing to engage in a toe to toe with Juan Manuel. Oh, stepped on his foot. Are you taking questions? Both there about that. Blood coming from the nose of Mingo. Mingo appears to be wearing down to me. Yep. the bell and that brings us to the end of the ninth round so far mingo the crowd responding by uh, some booze and now marty denkin wants uh, the doctor to check mingo's nose uh, sensing that it might be broken although there's really not that flow of blood coming from it Marquez picked it up now in round number nine. He came in on uh, Mingo, began wearing him down. Mingo looking a little bit jaded in the face. Look at that combination by Marquez. He's been waiting, really, to be able to land more than just one or two punches at a time for most of this fight. Last round, more successful. Clyde, look at me. You want to take one more shot? Clyde, you're, you're a human being. Okay, you're a human being. Yeah, not about a body. You know you're doing it. If I see you taking a problem. How does that? Okay. This is the last round. That's right. That's right. Give me a chance. Um, you can see him working on his nose, and the blood continues to flow, but Marty Denkel went over and, uh, and brought it back with the doctors there. Told him one more round if you aren't uh, doing better. Well, we're going to stop it. Mingo says, give me one more round. Let me, uh, let me go again. Across the way, almost uh, virtually unmarked. Juan Manuel Marquez. Marty told you're a human being. You're not a punching bag. I mean, thank you, thank you, thank you. Doing it. So I think we may see uh, Mingo go for the gusto here then. Well, it's, yeah, all or nothing at all here as they come up for round number 10, scheduled for 12. And we'll see if Mingo, oh, he came out and got nailed with a right hand and right on the bottom of back of his lap. And Marty Denkin is following him now. And, and he's talking to Mingo. And uh, well, put your gloves up. Make sure you're all right. Boy, I tell you. And that blood is flowing copiously now, Tom, out of the nose. Yeah. Well. 
Marquez caught him with the right hand, and Marquez senses that things could be all over in a big hurry here as uh, the youngster out of Mexico City comes after the 34-year-old veteran. Well, I know that Mingo, no matter what happens in the fight, if indeed this is the last round, will somewhere in the dressing room or in the cab to the hotel say, you guys told me to go out there and fight this kid hard. He knocked me down. You wouldn't let me do it my way and box him. showing more of a jab now since that knockdown, Tom. His jab's been pretty much missing all night, but he's been trying here in the 10th round to utilize it. But I'll tell you, in addition to um, Marquez, he has one added problem, and that is the nose bleeding. It must be difficult to breathe through. And, of course, there's always the swallowing of blood, which is really a disquieting thing to any fighter. Marquez is um, almost cautious to the point of, uh, of wonderment here, Rich. He hit him with the right hand, knocked him down. You know, I think he's got Mingo ready to go, and he, he's still studying him, Tom, which is, I know he doesn't want to be wild and sloppy, and he's been learning more and more technique, but I think he's got the man ready here. I do, too. And he may be letting an opportunity slip. Mingo suddenly looks as though he has really been in the fight. Both eyes swollen, nose bleeding. Game, of course, to the end here. Trying to catch a little magic and one big punch. Marquez will have none of that. Knocked him down here in this, the 10th. Round is coming to a close, less than half a minute. Now I wonder if they'll stop it between rounds. I'm wondering about that, too. Marquez has not taken advantage of what seemed to be a big uh, item in his favor of just a few moments ago. And Mingo has been trying to fight here to fight his way back in this, the 10th round. But well, the odds would certainly appear to be against him. Still boxing well and moving well but not doing anything in the way of scoring the punches against Marquez. We'll follow Mingo back to his corner, and Marty Denkin's not going over. So, uh, I don't know. One of the men in his corner, Louis Mingo's his dad. is troubling him so much he uh, and one can certainly understand that that's got to be very painful and of course um, bleeding so it's all over after 10 we'll get the official call the nabo featherweight champion is juan manuel marquez and we'll be back after this so his record goes to 19 and 1 that is uh, 19 straight victories and he's the uh, nabo featherweight champion we're talking about juan manuel marquez jimmy lennon jr has the official time of the win by knockout ladies and gentlemen this bout has been stopped at the end of round number 10 a referee in charge marty denkin calls a halt to the contest he had seen enough as Mingo had suffered a broken nose inhibiting his ability to perform. The winner by way of knockout, he is the new NABO featherweight champion, Juan Manuel Marquez. Marquez the winner. All right, celebrating, of course. Fernando Paramo is up in the ring. And maybe we can get a quick comment from Fernando and uh, Juan Manuel and Nacho Beristain. Fernando was telling me a moment ago that for the first time, Nacho Beristain says this kid's a pretty good prospect. Is that right, Fernando? Yeah, that is right. This, uh, what do you think Nacho Beristain uh, thinks now? ¿Qué crees que dice Nacho de esta, de esta actuación? Eh, pues un, es una pelea este, bastante sustedura dura porque yo nunca había peleado con peleadores zurdos, pero gracias a Dios definimos su estilo y salió todo bien. Y Nacho dijo que, que, que estábamos bien, que lo trabajáramos. Since the first time that he fights a left hand, the Nacho Beristain says uh, he was a good performance and that he was working very well. Nacho, a quick question, una, una pregunta rápida, una contestación rápida. ¿Cómo está progresando? ¿Está listo ya? ¿Es he ready now? 
Creo que sí. Ahora dio muestras de que está listo porque nunca nos dijeron que el peleador era zurdo, nos dijeron que era derecho y, y no entrenamos con usted. He says that he is ready. He said he was never told that he was a left-hander. He trained for a right-handed and still was able to beat him. Back to ringside. Thank you, Fernando. Our congratulations as you watch uh, some of the expertise in a solid right-hand knockdown scored by Marquez as he wins the NABO featherweight title.